Now let's build up on what we have been discussing and go a little deep. Let's come on to the IIT JE level. Now this uh, enough foundation has been created. We have discussed the problems that are covered in NCRT questions for in exams like WBGA, Triple E. Now in IIT what they will ask you, they will extend the same very idea but in a fashionable manner. They will say you, I have the substrate and uh, suppose I am carrying out a SN1 rea reaction via SN1 mechanism. Suppose I have uh, my solvent as water and that is acidified water, H plus is as a catalyst. Now they tell you or they tell us there are two types of products formed here and they ask you the reason why two types of products are formed. Actually this question appeared in a uh, mains paper of somewhere around 2003 or 2004. Now to solve this problem we ha need to know some theory, I'll help you out because we haven't discussed the whole of the reaction mechanism till now. But what we can intuitively guess up till the theory we have covered up till now, something will happen, this seems to be a polar solvent and SN1 mechanism will start. If SN1 mechanism start operating then this cleaving group will move out as Cl-. minus. That leaves behind plus charge on this carbon and this is asterisk marked carbon, start carbon. The start carbon signifies as a isotope of carbon, that means this is C14. This asterisk mark signifies as isotopic carbon. So this is these are C12, this is C14. If at all that happens, then a plus charge will come on asterisk marked carbon. And now you will intuitively guess, like this is one of the most fundamental thing that you have to clinch with. When you are dealing with SN1, you are having a formation of pure plus charge. And I told you before, whenever you have a formation of a pure plus charge, always and always there will be rearrangement of that plus charge carbocation if due to rearrangement, more stability can be br brought into the substrate. This is a very important concept. Now this situation do not arise in SN2 because in SN2 you don't have formation of a pure carbocation. When you don't have a pure carbocation, there is no question of rearrangement. But in SN1 you will always have to be cautious that the nucleophile may not attack at this site because the plus charge may not be at this site what we think to be. This plus charge might have migrated because of bringing instability at some other position. So the nucleophile will go to that other position instead of this position. So you have to keep a watch if this is the most stable position of a plus charge or you can further stabilize it by resonance, by rearrangement, whatever. So this will be an added uh, feature of SN1 that you have to consider while studying SN1. So incorporating both the things. Now up till now situation were like a cakewalk for us. It wasn't much of a uh, heck. We didn't have to consider for rearrangement because the problems that I have made you solve up till now did not have a scope for rearrangement. But there would be a scope for rearrangement in problems which comes appears in exams like IETJE. So here, what will happen? Plus charge is on this carbon. So there will be some factor that will cooperate to stabilize this carbocation. One of the factor, obvious factor here will be resonance. So when you draw the resonating structure of this carb this intermediate, so drawing you must be handy by now drawing the resonating structure besides plus charge you bring negative charge you put the electronic density into the orbital of this carbon that makes this carbon devoid of its electron bringing plus charge on this carbon this plus and minus will result in formation of a pi bond so the resonating structure would be drawn like this so the plus charge have actually migrated to this carbon so effectively in hybrid what is what will happen is you have a plus charge on both the carbons del plus del plus right S since it is symmetric we can also mark it as plus half and plus half but general keeping it in general terms some fraction will be here some fraction will be here so when the nucleophile comes to attack and here the nucleophile is water itself water has a two pair of lone pair so water acts as a nucleophile it can put its electron into the empty orbital it's always a weak nucleophile nevertheless it's a nucleophile so water acting as a nucleophile can attack this asterisk marked carbon that means isotopic carbon or normal carbon C12. When it attacks this position it will result in formation of an alcohol in which 
OH group is on the asterisk marked carbon. When this attacks on this carbon, it will result in formation of an alcohol in which OH group is attached to the normal carbon that is C12 carbon. Be so because of this, we will have two possible products. So fundamentally, this checks your concept whether you know about rearrangement, whether you know about resonance, whether you are keen to stabilize your substrate. Now organic chemistry is just about stability. If you need to remember, so you need to know some of the factors which brings about stability and in each and every reaction you just have to play around with those factors, stabilizing more and more, more and more, more and more to the products, intermediate reactants, intermediate substrates and ultimately reaching out to the products. So it's a very adventurous journey from the reactant to the product. Just playing around with the factors of stability, deciding it and then reaching, reaching out to the most stable product. So it becomes very handy and very easy once you are well equipped by these of by with these factors what we have studied. Now the theory part is almost over. We just have to play around with these factors and the, sil and the syllabus from here will be covered at very fast pace. So this is one of the things you know. From here we'll build up on another factor that will come into the picture that is rearrangement. Now rearrangement here will be kind of revision for you because we have studied rearrangement already. But just to brush you up a little and just to show you why we studied rearrangement and how to apply in a situation like when we deal with SN1. Now in SN1 we have a formation of pure carbocation so we have to worry about rearrangement. Now suppose I have been given an intermediate like this and they are humbly asking us to draw the product and they are also, they are also providing us the reagent. You have acidified water. Acidified water means water act as a nucleophile. It's a solvent as well and that solvent is also acting as a nucleophile. H plus is just acting as a catalyst. <laughs> Alright, so uh, now I haven't told you how to judge whether the reaction would be SN2 or SN1 but uh, we'll see that at a later stage. Let's not bog down by the, that detail of deciding whether it will be SN1 or SN2 considering there will be SN1. I'm giving you the information that reaction will proceed via SN1 mechanism. Now taking this uh, information into account what you will do, there are two steps involved in SN1. This we have already studied. The first step, in the first step living group will move out, there will be a formation of carbocation. In the second step nucleophile will attack. Those are the two steps involved. So let's do the first step. If you do the first step and if you bring out the leaving group, leaving group is chlorine, chlorine being more electronegative will leave out as Cl minus bringing plus charge on carbon the plus charge has been formed now you have to go for the second step in the second step nucleophile will come in and attack on the plus charged carbon but before the nucleophile comes in you do have to make sure that the carbocation which you have drawn that is the most possible most stable electro uh, carbocation that is possible with the given intermediate because rearrangement is a fast process very quickly the plus charge will move on to the most stable position before nucleophile com can come in and attack so when a nucleophile comes in it will cite the plus charge at the most possible most stable possible position so before you bring in nucleophile and attack that nucleophile make that nucleophile attack on the plus charged carbon you have to make sure that this plus charge is at the most stable position. Now let's see, is there any resonance here? No, there isn't any resonance. Is there any hyperconjugation here? No, there isn't any hyperconjugation. Because at the alpha position, you don't have any hydrogen. This CC bond is a strong bond. This will not participate in hyperconjugation. Now you think of then how to stabilize this carbocation. If there is no f factors operating to stabilize this carbocation, this carbocation will be unstable enough to be not formed under normal circumstances. Remember, when you don't have resonance, we don't have hyperconjugation, carbocations are very unstable, they are not formed at normal room temperature. So, uh, but this seems to be at 3 degrees, um, there seems to be lots of branching. So there will be something happening, there will be some factors operating to stabilize this carbocation. Now, I'm not going to go to the basics of rearrangement, we already have 
studied there you can get back to the lecture to brush yourself up but i'm just going to recapitulate that rearrangement will occur here and the most stable carbocation will be formed now all the three groups attached to this carbon are the same so there's no issue of deciding which group will go for rearrangement but one of the methyl will go for rearrangement what will happen is this electron the electron on in this bond will slowly start to migrate into the empty or vital of this plus charged carbon this methyl group will start to make a bond with this carbon which is having plus charge and this carbon will be devoid of its electron gradually so when this process completes what will happen is all the electron from this bond will be utilized to make a bond with this carbon when this carbon makes up the bond the plus charge vanishes when this carbon breaks up its bond the plus charge appears so the plus charge from this carbon has migrated to a internal carbon this is rearrangement of bonds now rearrangement will bring about stability before we didn't have any hyper uh, hyper conjugating effect operating because we didn't have any alpha hydrogen if we try to find out the alpha number of alpha hydrogen here surprisingly there will be eight alpha hydrogens three here three here two here so from zero we move on to a situation where we have eight alpha hydrogen so the extent of conjugation will dramatically increase after rearrangement that will bring about a lot of stability to the intermediate so this will be a very fast process because huge amount of stability is coming in when rearrangement operates when rearrangement occurs so rearrangement occurs very very fast before the nucleophile can come in and attack so the first step is formation of carbocation and before the second step there will be a intermediate step rearrangement if at all there's a scope of rearrangement to stabilize that carbocation more then of course there will be stabilizing stabilization of that carbocation before the second step can occur before a nucleophile come in and attack so now that we have made sure that the plus charge is more stable now if you go on to this this will be one degree here it will be one degree here again it will have less number of hyper conjugation so when you solve much of the problems by experience you can say that this is the most stable position whether you move on to any other carbon then the stability will be decreased so you can move on to the second step and then you can add OH here making an alcoholic group here so this is rearrangement and you have to bother about rearrangement at least you have to think that is this carbocation most stable carbocation if it is not we have to make it more stable before the nucleophile can come in and attack all right so this will be the inbuilt feature in sn1 whenever you'll have a sn1 mechanism you have to worry about rearrangement you have to worry about the stability if it is not the most stable carbocation carbocation you have to make it most stable carbocation right so this is something that you have to really bear in mind when you are dealing with sn1 mechanism So practicing a little more and just uh, uh, building up a little more on the same same concept if this electro this substrate is also to go to reaction via SN1 mechanism then again this chlorine will move out as Cl minus bringing in plus charge here and this plus charge this carbocation is actually one degree carbocation because the carbon having plus charge is attached to only one carbon there is alpha hydrogen here one alpha hydrogen is there on this carbon at alpha position so there is little of hyper conjugation but if we can make it a little more that will be much better always better to more stabilize that carbocation now we have to look for the possibility to stabilize this carbocation to a greater extent and if we do something like you know they are not like unexhaustive factors that we have to think about there are only limited number of factors limited number of uh, operations that we can do here and that makes it very easy for us to really think in a pro right direction and to bring this whole of the topic under our belt what you can do stabilize it how to stabilize you can have aromaticity for stabilization aromaticity is in happens in ring this is an open chain no question of aromaticity resonance there cannot be any resonance because adjacent to this electron deficient site you don't have an electron rich site like negative charge like lone pair like pi bonds you don't have it no resonance hyper conjugation yes there is hyper conjugation can we increase the extent of hyper conjugation let's see how to see that 
try to rearrange have rearrangement try to bring out bring in some uh, try to bring in some other group on this carbocation and take away the plus charge to some other carbon and then judge if the plus charge has been more stabilized that's it they are not various things are not unexhaustive things that you have to think of now we can think of rearrangement can we re can we have rearrangement here yes we can have rearrangement here now there are three groups on this carbon methyl methyl and hydrogen we can go for rearrangement now we have seen this before that for rearrangement the highest migratory apt migration aptitude is of hydrogen after hydrogen you see the bulkiness of that group if the more bulky group has greater migratory aptitude but hydrogen is the exception the highest is because of is of hydrogen and they say because of small size but the highest migratory aptitude is of hydrogen when you have a hi when you have a hydrogen there is no question of any other group going for migration so hydrogen will go for migration when hydrogen goes for migration a plus charge will be developed on this carbon and when hydrogen makes a bond with this carbon the plus charge of on this carbon will vanish away so when you have a hydride shift when you have a hydride shift the plus charge comes on a internal carbon and that internal carbon is sp3 hybridized sorry uh, it's a 3 degree it's sp2 hybridized this is a 3 degree ca 3 degree carbon 3 degree carbocation you have a 3 hydrogen on all the sides so we have 9 alpha hydrogen here here we had only 1 alpha hydrogen so from 1 we had we move on to 9 alpha hydrogen so the extent of hy hyper conjugation will drastically increase so that will make this hydride shift drastically fast so before the nucleophile can come in and attack the the plus charge will always will already be rearranged to a most stable position so now the electrophile nucleophile can come in and attack so if you have a water then oh group will be formed will get attached to this carbon and will have a tertiary butanol right so this is something we have to consider when we study sn1 when we go via sn1 mechanism rearrangement will always be there when we have a formation of a pure plus charge 